If you've spent any time reading news sources related to fishing, you've likely come across publications that predict peak times to fish throughout a day or even a month. But how are these predictions derived, and is there any merit to them? Some people swear by these predictions, while others call them total hogwash. In this video, I'll discuss the origins of the theory behind these predictions, how the predictions are made, and whether there's any scientific evidence that supports them. In 1926, a man by the name of John Alden Knight proposed a theory about the feeding habits of animals. This theory was based on the idea that animals' feeding behavior was driven by several main factors, which included, among other things, the movement of the sun and the moon. As he continued to refine his hypothesis, he eliminated many of these variables and ultimately settled on just three that he believed to be the primary drivers of feeding time. These were the position of the sun, the position of the moon, and the tide. Over time, more and more credibility has been given to this hypothesis, which has since come to be known as the soul lunar theory. So how does soul lunar theory predict the feeding behaviors in fish? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The theory simply states that the spin of the earth and the position of the moon relative to the sun predicts the behavior of major and minor peak feeding times of fish. So let's take a quick look at this in detail. The theory predicts that there are four feeding cycles that occur in a 24-hour day. Two of these cycles are considered minor feeding cycles, and two of them are considered major feeding cycles. The peaks of these four cycles correspond to the relative position of a given body of water to the moon. To visualize this, let's imagine that the red dot shown on the mock earth to the right is your favorite fishing spot. The location of your fishing spot changes during the course of a 24-hour day due to the spin of the Earth. So now let's watch the fishing cycles developed as the Earth rotates. As the red dot reaches the 6 o'clock position, the theory predicts that a minor feeding peak will occur. As our spot continues to rotate to the far side of the Earth from the Moon, the theory predicts that a major feeding peak will occur. As the location rotates back towards the Moon, and reaches the 12 o'clock position, a second minor peak occurs according to the theory. And finally, as our position finishes the cycle and returns to the spot directly under the moon, the theory predicts that a second major peak will occur. So now that we understand how the theory predicts daily feeding cycles of fish based on the rotation of the Earth, Let's take a look at how the revolution of the moon around the Earth impacts these daily feeding cycles. As the moon in the diagram approaches the 12 o'clock position, the daily peaks reach a slightly higher magnitude. After passing this position, the daily peaks begin to fall again before increasing to even higher magnitudes as the moon approaches the space directly between the sun and the Earth. As the moon makes its way to 6 o'clock, once again, magnitudes dip before again increasing to a minor peak. And finally, as it finishes its full revolution into the 9 o'clock position, a second major magnitude peak for the month occurs. In 1954, Frank Brown Jr., biologist and professor of biological sciences at Northwestern University, published a paper called persistent activity rhythms in the oyster. In his experiment, Professor Brown transported a batch of oysters that were removed from the Atlantic Ocean near New Haven, Connecticut, to his lab at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. There, he began to record the times the oysters would feed each day and compare them to their normal feeding times in their home ocean waters. What he found was very interesting. At first, the oysters maintained the same feeding times that they held in their home ocean grounds. However, over the course of a few weeks, their feeding times slowly changed until they were synced to the lunar cycle that correlated with the local time. This meant that instead of eating in sync with the tides, as the oysters did in New Haven, they were feeding in sync with the moon being directly overhead and directly underfoot. This was an interesting result and certainly appears to support solunar theory. 
And although many scientists at the time were skeptical of Professor Brown's results, today many scientists are discovering biological clocks that appear to be in sync with various environmental rhythms, including the lunar cycle. What about you? In your experience, do fish seem to feed more heavily during these cycle peaks as predicted by the theory? Drop your responses in the comments and let us know. And as always, thanks for watching.